Ho 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 dear. Today we are going back in time. Looks like we will be playing some good old Mage Knights. So get your adult diapers, hearing aids, and prune juice so we can begin a Mage Knights Battle Report. Mage Knights Battle Report! The Orc Raiders versus the, uh, the what? Oh! The Elemental League! Where am I? For those unfamiliar with the early 2000s wargame, Mage Knights is a skirmish wargame. You collect a number of figures and create a warband with them. Each figure belongs to a certain faction, and models in that faction team up and fight to capture objectives or destroy the opponent. Each model has a damage profile as they take damage. You click them down that many times. To create a warband, you add up the number of points listed on their spin dial and decide on a faction. For those interested, we are using the Mage Knights Unlimited January 2002 edition rules. And we are not using the capture rules for this game. A link to the rules is down in the description. Oh, and today I actually have an opponent. My brother Eric. He will be controlling the Elemental League models, which consists of a war bear, a were bear, a few different trees, and a pair of wolves. And of course, then you have me. I'll be running the Orc Raiders. I have a bunch of guys that can get up in close combat. A Chaos Mage, a guy that shovels dirt at you, and more close combat dudes. For this battle, we will decide to make it simple. We are playing a 200 point game and we'll be playing to the death, or until one person surrenders. Let's jump into the game. To start, we roll off to see who will go first. Orcs will be the red dice and elementals will be the gray. The elementals will start things off. Also, since we are playing a 200 point game, each army will get two actions and then the turn will pass over. Simple as that. The elemental league will move the two wood golems closer to the center of the board. They each move six inches, and with mage knights, you actually measure from the center of the base. We then notate their completed actions with a couple coins I had lying around. The turn then hops over to the orcs. To copy my opponent, I will move a couple guys forward as well, and then mark them as completed. Next for the Elemental League are Yogi and Boo Boo. The Were Bear will move up first 6 inches or so, and to follow the War Bear will move his max of 8 inches. Keep an eye out for these bears, they can cause some major devastation. The turn then passes over to my Crusher, who I will move forward around the rundown Orc Tower. Then I will push my Launcher forward, hoping in a later turn to fire a harpoon at those silly trees and animals. The pair of Doggies will rush forward next. They each charge up 10 inches. They do have a special ability as well to charge and attack in the same turn, so keep an eye out for that. The Orc with the Shovel and the big ol' Crusher take their turn and decide to move up closer to the center of the board as well. They are looking to beat and then bury some twigs. Back over to the bears, the werebear will run up and move behind the rock. Then the tanglewood spirit will branch out 8 inches closer into the fray. The chaos mage will scoot forward and make sure to stay out of range of the wolves. He also has a magical range of 12 inches, fancy. And then the fuser orc will move in front of the mage to protect him. Treebeard's friends are next. They will travel their six inches and go around the barricades to get into a better position. They have to get in close combat to do some damage. The orc launcher will move up again and the crusher will move up as well. Oh, you can see a bear close by as well. Soon. Soon. The war bear is going to charge up and the other scary bear will become a shield against the launcher's ranged attack. That war bear is super strong and Eric wants to protect that savage beast. Next is the Chaos Mage who has a fancy ability that allows his ranged attacks to go through terrain and models called Magic Blast. He will attack into the Red Wolf. On a 6 he hits, but misses with a 4. The Crusher will go next and move closer towards the enemy Wood Golems. Next, the wolves, or what they are actually called the Glade Guardians, will take their turn moving up close to the Crusher, so that in a later turn they can charge and attack in all in one turn. Next, the Shovel Orc will take his turn and move up. Keep in mind he has a small ranged attack of 6 inches. Then we will jump over to the Orc Launcher who will use his big range of 12 inches and fire at the Werebear. He hits on a 4 and manages to deal out 6 damage. 
but to my surprise, damaging the werebear makes him stronger. Uh oh. The werebear is now very angry, and will now move its 8 inches in base contact with the launcher. That is very scary. And then Yogi will move towards the crusher, and he is on a warpath. Look out, poor little orc. Next, the crusher will attack into the warbear, hoping to hit on a 10, but misses pretty bad with a 7. We then switch over to the Chaos Mage, who will use the Magic Blast ability again, hitting the Red Glade Guardian on a 6, and it goes off on a 10. He will also elect to roll d6 damage rather than taking the standard 4 because of the Magic Blast ability. Hoping to get lucky, the die is rolled, and he deals out a modest 3 clicks of damage. This will remove the Special Charge ability from this wolf. The Blue Glade Guardian will use his Charge Special ability, move forward, and attack into the Crusher hitting on a 6 or better, and lands a 7 which deals out a total of 2 damage. And to continue the turn, we will move over to the Werebear, who will be pushed. This means he can go 2 turns in a row, but at the end of his activation he will suffer a click of damage. He will attack into the Orc Launcher, hitting on a total of 3, and barely sneaks the damage through. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's okay. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes, that was a close one. Next, the Shovel Boy will take his turn. He will attack at range into the blue wolf, hitting on an 8, but rolls a double 1 which is a critical fail, and he will take a point of damage himself. That is unfortunate. Then the crusher will attempt to damage the blue wolf as well. He needs a whopping 10 or better, and does not get it with a 6. Not a very good turn here. Next we move over to the war bear, who will attack into the little puny crusher, hitting on a 3 or higher and easily slams through 4 damage. That is gonna hurt a lot. To follow this up, the Red Glade Guardian will simply move up into base contact with the other damaged Crusher. Next, the Chaos Orc Mage will use his Magic Blast ability on the Red Wolf, hoping to finish it off. He just can't roll double ones, and deals out enough damage to take down the pup. First blood goes to the Chaos Mage. Then we will move over to the Crusher that was heavily damaged by the War Bear. He will swing back, hitting on a 10, and misses, but was very close with that 9. The Werebear will attack next into the Demoralized Orc Launcher. Just don't roll double ones, and it doesn't take much to take down another model. This then leaves the Blue Wolf to attack into the Damaged Crusher. On a 4 or better, the Wolf deals out a total of 2 damage, only 2 more clicks, and this Crusher will be taken down. Speaking of the Crusher, he is going to attack back into the Glade Guardian. Hitting on a 9, misses with a total of 4. This gives a chance for the Shovel Boy to throw some dirt. He also hits on a 9, but also misses the attack. These orcs are not that strong after all. To showcase the strength of these bears, the War Bear will take his turn now. He will attack into the Crusher, or as we like to call him, the Crushinator. Since he is so heavily damaged, the War Bear just can't roll double ones, and he finishes the Crushinator off. The Glade Guardian will also get pushed to finish off the other Crusher on the battlefield. Again, no double ones, and he is also taken out, and the Wolf will take a click of damage. The Chaos Mage is disappointed in his Orc Pals and will attack into the Blue Wolf. Hitting on a 5 up, he hits and finishes off the Pesky Wolf. Then we head over to the Tribal Brute who has been hiding all game, and he will just move up 6 inches towards all the action. For the Elemental League, a Wood Golem will move up, making sure to stay out of range of the Chaos Mage. Then we will jump over to the Tanglewood Spirit, who has not done much this game so far, and will take its turn to move up the battlefield. Over to the Shovel Boy now. After taking a point of damage earlier, he only deals out one damage, and those pesky wood golems have an ability called Toughness, which reduces damage from attacks by one click. So he is running away because he is about useless now. I think I chose the wrong army today. The Fuser Orc will then go and charge up to the Tanglewood Spirit, gearing up to attack in a later turn. The Spirit will then spin to face the Orc, and then the turn will pass over. The War Bear is next, and he will move up 8 inches forward. He is looking to charge into that Chaos Mage later on in the game. And just like his bear pal, the Were Bear will move his 7 inches closer to the fray. 
The elementals are closing in. It is starting to look rough for the orcs. The Chaos Mage will go next and use his action to rotate so that its front arc is facing both the War Bear and the Tanglewood Spirit. He wants to get off more of those magical blasts. Next, the Tribal Brute will move up to the War Bear and create a shield for the Mage. He does not want the bear charging into his leader. For the Elementals, a Wood Golem will move up closer to Shuffle Boy, and that will finish its action. To follow up, the Tinklewood Spirit will take his turn attacking into the Fuser Orc. It needs a 7 or better, and slashes in an attack with its branches, damaging the Orc for one click. Shovel Boy will go next and essentially sacrifice himself to protect the mage from the wood golems. He will move up and block in the tree lord. Then the fuser orc will attack back into the tanglewood. He hits on a 7 and lands the attack dealing out 2 damage. Only 2 more clicks and it is defeated. The war bear is next and he ain't happy. With his claws he will slash into the brute. The brute's armor is terrible so the bear just can't get double ones and slams in 3 damage. After that brutal attack, the werebear will take his sweet old time and move up closer to the action. This will end the Elemental League's turn. The Tribal Brute is not that happy after taking damage and will attack back into the warbear, hitting on an 8, but he rolls a 4 and that is not enough to penetrate the bear's hide. Next is the Chaos Mage will use a ranged attack and shoot some magic blast into the werebear, hitting on a 6 up and slams in 3 magical damage. Finally, one of the bears is starting to look quite weak. The trees are next. The Tanglewood Spirit will attack into the Fuser Orc. It hits on fives and pushes through a single point of damage. To follow this up, the Wood Golem will attack into the Shovel Master. He needs a six or higher for this attack and nails it on a ten. This poor little orc takes three damage and goes down into a derpy, demoralized state. And because this orc is in a demoralized state, he will hang out for his action. This moves the second action over to the Fuser Orc, who will attack into the Tanglewood, hitting on a 7-up, and once again the Elementals are too tough. This will move things back over to the Werebear, who will only moves 5 inches now. He will move closer to the Mage, but not close enough. We then hop over to everyone's other favorite bear, the one on the Warpath. He'll attack into the Brute, just don't get double ones, and he takes him down. I then pull away my little orc man. And look at that, look Four at damage. his face. He's pretty upset over that one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's the Chaos Mage's turn now, and he will fire a bolt of energy into the Werebear. He just needs to get more than double ones here to take down the beast, and he is successful. That is one bear down, one more to go. Over to the Wood Golem. He just needs a three up to take out the Digger, and the tree trunk is successful. Then the camera will shakily move over to the Tanglewood Spirit who will attack into the Fuser Orc. He only needs a 4 or better because this Fuser Orc has been peppered with damage, and it looks like he will take another click of damage. After getting poked, the Fuser Orc will attack back into the Tanglewood. On a 5 up, he hits the Twisted Vines and destroys the Walking Wood. The Orcs are coming back a little bit now. This is when I decided to take a risk and push the Chaos Mage. He will take a click of damage at the end of his action. He will blast magic into the War Bear, hitting on a 7 up, and the risk pays off dealing 3 damage to the War Bear. This Chaos Mage needs to go off to take down the rest of these elementals. After taking some damage, the War Bear will use his action to move up and get in base contact with the Shaman. This is not looking good. The blue wood golem that we all forgot about will move next. It will move its 6 inches forward and move towards all of this chaos. The orc raiders get to go next, but the chaos mage cannot be pushed again since it was pushed last turn. And if the fuser orc gets pushed, it will become demoralized and useless. So the orc raiders will pass their turn back over to the elementals. The war bear will take his turn again, pushing itself to the limit. He will take a point of damage at the end of its turn, but not before attacking into the Chaos Mage. On a 5 up, he deals out 3 clicks of damage. The Yellow Wood Golem will trudge forward and unfortunately it is not far enough to get in base contact with the Mage. The enemies seem to be closing in fast on my Orc Raiders, but I still have a trick up my sleeve. It is now the Chaos Mage's turn. Since being damaged, he now has access to a special ability called Magic Levitation. 
This ability allows me to move a model that is in base contact with the mage up to 10 inches as my action. So we then commence liftoff with the war bear and teleport his butt right in front of the orc fuser's ranged gun. Oh yeah, and then he will take a shot at that fluffy bum. Hitting on fours now, the war bear will take three total damage. This war bear has finally been taken down a significant peg. Back over to one of the wood golems. This guy will continue to move up and get closer to the rear guard of the chaos mage. This can become a big issue. And the turn will move over to the orcs. But just like a couple turns ago, the orc raiders will elect not to push either of their models, so it jumps back over to the elemental league. The yellow wood golem will then move up to the mage, which will force me to turn the mage to face this new foe. Then we hop over to the war bear, who will move away from the fuser orc's guns and make his way back to the mage. Since he has taken a large amount of damage, the bear can only move 5 inches, which is not the greatest. Now we will head back over to some chaos mage shenanigans. He will magically teleport the wood golem now in front of the orc fuser and do the good old alley-oop play again. The fuser orc will fire a blast at the wood golem, but I'll let that real-time audio tell you the sad story of what is going to happen here. Oh, oh, oh that's the game. That is game. Oh, no. Okay, uh, he's now demoralized. Yes, double ones. This means the fuser orc takes a click of damage and becomes demoralized, which means he can fight no longer. But there is still a sliver of hope, and that is the Chaos Mage. But it is now the Blue Wood Golem's turn who will move up at 6 inches and get in base contact with the Orc Mage. The turn then moves over to me, where I feel like I am forced to move this Wood Golem again. I will in fact push the Mage, taking a click of damage to magically levitate another Tree Boy. Things are getting really dire now for the Orcs. The War Bear, who is still hanging on, will move forward and get in the Orc Mage's business. The mage will free spin to face this terrifying threat. With a demoralized orc and the mage being pushed last turn as well, the orc raiders will pass over again to the elementals. This will grant Eric the ability to move both of his wood golems closer to the final target. The enemy is closing in on the mage. I don't know what other tricks I have up my sleeve to pull this one out. The turn passes back to the shaman, and as a consolation prize, we'll attack into the war bear. Hitting on a 5 up, a 6 is rolled, and at least I was able to take down the other brutal bear. That is one tough bear. After the war bear moves on into the afterlife, the wood golems will not be pushed and pass their turns. This will also happen for the orc raiders. This means the turn comes back to the golems, who both will move into base contact with the orc shaman, hoping to take him out. But it is the mage who has at least one more attack in him. He will take his skull totem and smash it at the yellow wood golem, hitting on an 8 up, but he misses on a 4. Now the turn goes to the wood golems. The blue golem will be pushed and then attack in. Hitting on a 3 up, it hits and deals enough damage to take out the mage. Since the fuser orc is essentially a dead orc, I forfeit, granting victory to the Elemental League. Man, I miss playing some Mage Knights. This was the game that started it all. Collecting the figures, creating a warband, not knowing what to do or how to play. Well, some of this still seeps into today, of course. This game definitely satiated some of my nostalgia. But Eric and I would be more than happy to play some Mage Knights games. If you all have an interest in seeing more old-school gaming like this, let me know. If there is an audience, we will play some more MK. Until next time, folks, thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.